The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. you got markets in red territory right now. The S&Ps, negative by single digits. digits. You're off by just three points, we'll call it. Trading at 44.39. You see the acceleration overnight. We're talking about making lows overnight just in the last hour or so at about 44.34. You were in higher positive territory, though. As in, there was your close yesterday. We accelerated from the lows intraday at about 44.23. You make it up to almost 44.55 overnight. Right now, we're trading at 44.40. 44.40, we'll call it. NASDAQ 100, we're off by 19 points right now, 15,073. You got the Dow barely in the red by 37, and the Russell off by three. Crude, slightly in the positive, but boy, we're falling off right now. You're up to 80.80. We're pushing $80 right now. You're positive eight, eight pennies on the session. Gold, Negative two dollars right now. Gold has some volatility yesterday, up to 1954, down to 1944, and right now we're right back near that area at 1945 in gold. We talked about my dad. Two days, no, one day tomorrow. He's having a gold report webinar, man. Tomorrow, after the bell at four o'clock, check out the gold report, folks. You sign up for 30 days, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You gain access to the webinar. Gold with some volatility recently, as with bonds, as with the note in the dollar. You jump to the bond, you're off by seven ticks right now. The 10 year, we were all the way up to 110.12. Now we rolled here, I think. Is that right? I think that could be a roll. Maybe, when did that roll? Yeah, that's gonna be a roll. So I'm not sure that that's, and you know, this is where just being aware because you'd say, oh man, we're higher, right? Well, not exactly the case in terms of higher price because we have yields right now of 4.23%. 4.23%. So we rolled there and you are actually negative by about five ticks, even though the chart is showing you a little gap to the upside there. Okay. Nonetheless, 4.23%. The yield on the 10 year right now, we jump over to the dollar index, DXY. And you got the dollar with higher yields pushing basically the highs of last Friday. You're at 104.24 as the dollar just continues to rise. You put that thing on the daily. I mean, I remember talking about when we got to about 103, 103.50, that we had got the entire move back from July 6th to the lows of July 17th. You were below 100, and boom, just like that, you're at 104.27. We jump over to the euro US dollar. Euro US dollar right now, quite a pullback from 112 to 108 right now in the euro US dollar. We jump over to the volatility index. We got the VIX right now. 1515, pairing some of that volatility after Jackson Hole when you spike to about 1720. Now it's Tuesday. We're coming into some storm action for sure. That's in Florida. But what we're coming into storm action for potentially the market is we got a jobs number coming up on Friday. Very interesting that we come into Labor Day weekend with a jobs number. Everybody's got to stay at their desk for that probably. And then they might be out of there, depending on what kind of a number we get. But we get that number on Friday. So we'll see where we go from there. All right, let's jump around to some of the stories we got as we kick things off in China. In the press again, Bloomberg basically kicking it off with this story on the top of their webpage. China banks to cut rates on mortgages, deposits in stimulus push. Seems like China, man. They just keep trying to bring it. You jump over to Asia right now. You're talking about the Hang Seng up almost 2%. Shanghai up one2 you got the Nikkei up by about two tenths percent. And as it says, Beijing has struggled to boost growth in investor confidence. Seems like they're trying everything here and we'll see if they get it done. The largest banks are preparing to cut interest rates on existing mortgages and deposits. I mean, imagine if they were doing that over here, right? It's basically the same thing. If you have an adjustable mortgage in terms of the Fed, that is what happens if you have an adjustable rate, right? The Fed will cut, your rate goes down. It's adjustable. They're reducing rates uh, of $5.3 trillion of outstanding mortgages as of Tuesday. So they keep pushing there. That's going to be in the story. 
that's going to be in the press as they continue to struggle over in China, to put it lightly, man. My dad was talking about the prices that he's paying on containers right now and shipping on China. And if you missed the program last night, check it out. But just dramatically reduced rates in terms of what you're paying over there because things are not as tight as they used to be, to put it lightly. And we jump over to our rates with that. Mortgage rates at 7% are making everything worse for U.S. home buyers. Now, the complex part of this that I keep thinking about, right? Because you'd say to yourself, okay, man, we're at a pretty lofty level in terms of where we've recently been for the Fed, right? So let's say that mortgage rates might be just a little high right now. I don't think we're going back to 3%, right? I don't know if we're going back to 3% anytime soon, but hopefully maybe we're going back to five or five and a half percent. Anything under five, that would mentally be, I think, a, an opening of a spigot in terms of you can get a mortgage at 4.75%, right? The buying power changes dramatically versus a 7% number. But here's the complex part that I think about. Let's just say you think that's going to happen, right? Let's say you think mortgage rates are going to go back down to 4.75% over the next two to three years. As inflation wanes, the Fed stays higher for longer, but then they begin to cut maybe the end of next year. I'm hearing some forecasts for cuts at the end of the next year. That seems somewhat reasonable. Remember when we were talking about getting cuts in January, right? Remember when that was getting priced in? The end of next year, I mean, that's a year and three months, a year and six months. Let's just say you think that's going to happen, and we don't know what's going to happen, but that's a market opinion. One thing to consider here is what's going to happen on the supply side of things when people who have been trapped in their home and only trapped by making a good financial decision, right? You're only trapped by the fact that you don't want to go pay the market rate because you made such a good financial decision of buying a house at a prior point in time that you enjoy that rate and you're not willing to give it up. So the word trapped is not a fair representation of you're only trapped by the good decision you made, right, in that equity. But what's going to happen when we get down to those levels? A lot of people are going to have mobility that they have not had. What's that going to do? That's going to open up people to selling properties they might not have wanted to sell. That's just going from a first home to a second home. That's just upgrading. If you're in like a 3-2 and you want to get a little bit bigger home, you can't do that right now, man. You know, if you're in a 3-2 or something like that and you got a 3.5% mortgage, you're going to get clobbered if you decide to buy a more expensive house at a 7% rate. Can't happen. It can happen if you start going to 475. So what's going to happen? It's potentially going to open up a big spigot on the sell side. But, and here's the key part of this, because I'm trying to go, how many, you know, what level down do you go, right? Where does it influence? Does it influence supply or does it influence demand? Because if it influences demand more so, then you have prices going up. If it increases supply, then you have actually prices going down. But here's the last part of that, is that for all those people that might be trapped in their houses, right, now maybe they have the opportunity to sell. Well, most of those people are gonna be buying something else. That would be the kicker there. So even though you might have an influx of sales, maybe what happens is all those people, if you're trapped and you don't wanna sell because you can't buy again, well, guess what? The moment you're gonna sell, you might be in the market for a more expensive home again. Or maybe you just wanna move or whatever it is, right? So you look at these rates, you look at the whole market, it's held up so well at 7%, it's gonna be interesting to see over we, as we progress in the next year or two, um, where we go from there. But that's the conversation I'm trying to have because it's very reasonable to think rates are gonna go down. It seems like that would be the case, but keep in mind the transactions that will occur for all those people that have been trapped in those houses that might have an opportunity to sell. All right, folks, we're coming back. We're talking equities. We're talking to Kevin Hinks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by about six points right now, trading at 44.36. We get the NASDAQ 100 off by about 28 points right now. With that in mind, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network, folks. Fast market right here every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time. Check it out. And uh, we're coming into Jobs Friday. We got a little bit of hurricane action going on in Florida, uh, but the market's slightly calm this morning. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Tommy O'Brien, uh, not a lot going on so far this morning. That said, the pace of this week is about to pick up. Um, we got some housing data out this morning that was pretty uneventful. I think with the dollar higher and yield higher, uh, their inertia to the upside, but all that's about to change, Tommy, as starting with jolt data that we'll get here in less than an hour, the pace of economic data for this week is really heavy uh, to go through the week, Tommy. We'll, we'll get jolts. Then tomorrow we'll get ADP, jobless claims on Thursday, uh, not not non-farm payrolls and unemployment on Friday. We get GDP in there. We get income and outlays in there. There's a lot of data between now and the end of the week, Tommy. So I think this market's going to get a lot to consume and digest here, and uh, we'll see what happens. I haven't had a chance to talk to you since Friday. We heard from the chairman on Friday. We had a little bit of volatility in both directions. The market uh, slightly above where we were trading at um, from Chairman Powell. What do you, did you think of his remarks, Kevin, in terms of where we go forward? As you mentioned, we get a lot of economic data. That's going to be the deciding factor, of course, the data. Um, but there's a lot of talk about where we go. You like to stay current and not go too far in the future. But what did you think about what Chairman Powell said and the prospects kind of, of where we go from here with their interest rate policy? You know, some people thought he was relatively even keeled or relatively. I thought he was extremely hawkish. I thought he, uh, you know, made a couple things that conversations were drifting like is 3 percent enough in terms of inflation. And he was he he you know mentioned unequivocally that two percent is and always will be the target. He he sounded worried about inflation that's running still too hot, and the chances are for it to go back up. I think Jerome Powell uh, gave, gave the market a friendly wake up reminder that the fight on inflation is not over yet, and two months of good data. Inflation moving in the right direction does not mean 
mission accomplished. So uh, I thought it was, I thought the market liked it because it wasn't as harsh as a year ago, but I think it was still firm in his fight against inflation. Remember, Tommy, he's got three and a half unemployment. So therefore, in the Fed's got two mandates. One is not concerning him. He's really only got one mandate, and that's it's a great summation. I got a similar feeling, and it was, you know, I'm checking it out on the Thinkorswim platform as you're talking about it. I'm looking at Friday action. It was just remarkable, man, in terms of the 50-point acceleration down. And then maybe the market said, ah, you know what? It could have been worse, man. Do you remember last year? And you got 50 points back up, uh, and we're a little bit positive from there. With that in mind, Kevin, you mentioned it. We're a little slow here as we end the earnings season, but we got some economic numbers coming up this week. But do you guys have some equities you'll be talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Earnings, not so much today. Uh, some some pretty thin names. So we're going to trade Oracle in the first segment. Like Folio is going to do a presentation on Celsius, the energy drink that is bursting onto the scene and really a really strong competitor to monster some of their energy drinks. And then we'll look at NVIDIA a couple of days, a couple of weeks after their earnings event. Let's look at where it's come and how we can trade it here, Tommy. Yeah, Celsius. I have some Celsius in my fridge right now, Kevin. The people in my house, they like it. It's got a lot of caffeine it's in them. It's extremely popular and growing like a weed, Tommy. Man, those energy drinks, those caffeinated beverages, whatever it be. Uh, I'll check it out, Kevin. I look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today, man, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. I appreciate the time, as always. Folks, check it out, 12 o'clock today, Fast Market. Kevin Hanks, Tom White, the team, they do an outstanding job, and you heard it. They'll be talking about three equities, Oracle, Celsius, and how about NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA shares, man, holding up pretty well. You had some volatility. I think we hit 520 was the number on their, their earnings. Yeah, there it was. 520 was the number. Nice round number, I man, Basil Chapman. Uh, we're actually below where we came into those earnings, though. Holding up well, but holding up right where we came into those earnings. You can learn a lot in this market, folks. You talk about optimism priced in when you deliver the numbers they delivered and you can't go higher. What's it going to take to go higher, right? Well, they're dealing with some lofty multiples, to put it lightly. All right, let's check out what we have in terms of currencies going on right now. We get the dollar index. Yeah, we're pushing highs, man. So dollar, 104.32 right now. Get the 10-year, continuing to drop a bit. And where do we start on some of these stories we got going on? Let's see. Let's start with Google. Why not? Let's jump to Google shares. We're going to talk a little bit of AI. Google shares this morning, we're going to be up a bit. We have a negative market, but Google getting a slight lift. So story out here from Bloomberg talking about that Google is adding AI tools from companies including Meta and Anthropic to its cloud platform. So it's going to weave more generative AI into its products and position itself as a one-stop shop for cloud customers seeking to tap into the technology. Uh, they're going to be able to access Meta's Llama 2 large language model, as well as AI startup Anthropic's Cloud2 chatbot. It's pretty amazing how the forefront's coming so quickly, man. This was announced at Google's Next23 event in San Francisco. It's part of the company's effort to position its platform as one where customers have the freedom to choose an AI model that best meets their needs, whether from the company itself or one of its partners. I mean, that's pretty interesting, right? Because we hear all about what is what is Google's uh, AI? Bard? Is that what it's called? I believe it is. Yeah, but they're going to go bigger than that because they know that probably the money there is being the gatekeeper to everything, just like they are the gatekeeper to search on the Internet. Why not be the gatekeeper to the cloud clients and providing all AI services to those cloud clients versus just your own AI services, right? Uh, so the race is on. Yeah, and why not? This one was up there from Meta I found interesting. Disrupted a massive disinformation campaign linked to Chinese law enforcement. Yeah, China, Russia, the, the forefront is technology, man. 7,700 accounts, 930 pages on Facebook. I mean, think how easy. This is what's, and, and it ties into AI, right? Because imagine as bots become so good that they can replicate humans. And we've seen the discussion, discussions for CAPTCHA, 
okay? I'm not sure if you've been following along, but even Elon, it became something in terms of on X or formerly known as Twitter, saying that robots or bots, computers essentially, are now better at CAPTCHA, which is supposed to make sure that you're a human than actually humans are. So it's very difficult now to catch a bot because bots are so smart they can just mimic a human. So think how easy it is to create fake accounts, folks. I mean, there's going to be AI systems where I say, I mean, imagine, this is how it's going to go, okay? Create a million fake accounts, give them all different names, different first names, different last names, different email addresses, make faces for them, um, create personas, have an about section, log on, create an account, create a page, and you see it. So it's already happening. It'll be interesting to see where we go from there. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back for the open. we got a lot to talk about. Don't go away. Rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P opening basically flat for the session at 44.42. NASDAQ 100 barely in the red. All the markets slightly in the red right now. We jumped to commodities. Crude hanging out above $80, 80.35 right now. You jump to the gold contract basically flat at 19.46. And as I mentioned, folks, my dad, he's got a gold report webinar coming up tomorrow. So if you current gold report subscribers out there, you gain free access to this webinar. Uh, you just got to be in the Tiger's Den Discord. You will be tagged. You'll be able to access that special live webinar with Tom kicking off tomorrow at 4 o'clock. 
If you're not in the den, you'll receive an email that's going to tell you how to get in the den for free as a member of the Gold Report. You'll be able to go to that. If you've never checked it out, folks, great time to sign up for the Gold Report. You can sign up for either a month, six months, or a year. A month is $119. All of these come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're thinking about keeping this letter, okay, and you say, hey, I'm going to check it out. Maybe I'll even keep it for six months. You have a 30-day free grace period for all of these. So if you're thinking about keeping it, right, and you're going to keep it on a monthly, well, if you pay two months, you're already paying 240 bucks, and a six month is 559, and they all come with a 30 day money back guarantee. You get the letter for a month, six months, a year, you get the webinar, Tom will be in there tomorrow. What moves the gold market? He's gonna be talking about a deep dive into the markets, gold, bonds, and the dollar. All of them so related right now. Gold, bonds, dollar, what are you talking about? You're talking about currencies, you're talking about debt, and you're talking about assets. They're all related, and we're seeing it play out in dramatic fashion. Where are they now? What to look for is gold and bonds move higher and the dollar moves lower. Talking about the XAU, HUI, the GDX, how they're trading, what to look for as we move higher. Talking specific gold equities, so answer questions live. So check that out, folks, on the front page of TFNN.com. And, yeah, it's been a few years since Tom done, has done a gold report webinar. He's excited, folks, uh, so get in there. Don't miss that one. All right, let's jump around and see what else we got going on. So we got, uh, it's interesting. We'll start off with the phone companies, okay? We got uh, an upgrade. City upgrades the telecom companies to a buy, citing a stabilizing competitive wireless environment. They said the current valuations may be over discounting remediation costs related to lead covered cables. Now, remember when that one came out? I'm sure we can find it on the chart. That was probably it right there, I'm guessing. July 13th, when the story comes out potentially, that they have lead wires everywhere all over the country. I think it was a journal article talking about then you measure the area around these lead cables, and obviously lead is everywhere. Uh, lead covered cables is what it is that they used to use. You jump over to Verizon, they're up by 1.7%. AT&T, they're up by 2.3%. Well, you know Verizon. That's a tough looking chart, man. You know, you're getting a little bit of a lift today, I guess. At any price, at you know a specific price, anything can be attractive. But I'd be careful in these equities, all right? And if you do plan on getting into them, the way I would do it is I would stagger into it, all right? You know, you want to get into these equities right now. We got an S&P sitting at almost 4,500. You want to get into these equities right now? There's nothing wrong with putting in, you know, a position right now. Maybe you go three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. Maybe you put yourself in a position right now, and then in six months you add another third of a position, and then in another six months you add a third of a position. So you go in in kind of three trenches, right? Right now, in six months, and in six months you price yourself in over the next year. And here's the best part of that. The best part of that strategy right now is stock goes up. Well, you're already making money on the third of your position that you begin today. Stock goes down. You're making 5% right now on that money that's sitting there waiting to purchase those shares in the future. If you're thinking about scaling into equities right now, the coolest part about doing that is that you are getting paid 5% APY on that money sitting there waiting to scale in, which is so cool um, because these charts look rough, man. To put it lightly, you take a look at Verizon, but you're up today, up by 1.8%, AT&T up by 2.3%. And let's jump back to see where they are in terms of those numbers. You came into that lead story at 15 on AT&T, it looks like. And let's see, Verizon. Is that the drop off? 37 to 31? When was that? July 6th? No, it's going to be different, right? Maybe that was the drop off. All right, I'll have to pull that up and get the exact date. Nonetheless, tough charts all around, but they get upgrades from City. We jump over to Best Buy. One of the equities out with their numbers today. You're catching a bid on the open. You're up by 4%. You jump over to Best Buy. A buck 22 a share is what they report. Ahead of, I think it was a buck 06. Let's pull it up. Where are our numbers here? Yes, it was. So a dollar 22 versus a dollar 06. They beat on revenue as well. They're seeing a reversion to pre-pandemic sales levels as consumers return to more typical spending patterns and feel pressure on their budgets because of inflation. Home Depot, Lowe's, Best Buy had outsized gains during COVID, as of course, uh, but not so much since then. Comp sales 
decreased 6.2% compared with a year ago period as customers bought fewer appliances, home theaters, and mobile phones. Gaming systems, on the other hand, were a sales driver. Online sales tumbled 7.1%. They narrow its full year outlook 438 to 44.5. So they don't narrow it. They do narrow it, but they only narrow it from the upside, right? Check that out. It used to be 43.8 was the floor, but they were thinking maybe they'd get as high as taking in 45.2. And now they're saying, listen, the floor is still there, 43.8. But the max we're going to take in now is 44.5. They just shaved $700 million. For comp sales, it expects a decline of 4.5 to 6 instead of 3 to 6. So it's worse than they thought. But nonetheless, they beat and they are up in positive territory. That's an interesting one, right? Because the forecast is negative. And usually if the forecast is negative, that's what the market cares about most. But they're seeing positive traction since relaunching. They're my best buy as a three-tier program. This is a tough one, man. I would not be signing up for a recurring subscription for best buys. You got to spend a lot of money to make that worthwhile, folks. $180 a month is their top tier. Now, I don't even know what that comes with. But anyway. Pretty remarkable, everyone, trying to get into the recurring revenue game, even when you're talking about signing up for a subscription plan for an electronics store that you need to spend money to buy their electronics from. But yeah, the market likes it, man. Look at that. They keep rocking as this S&P is now positive by four. NASDAQ 100 up by 18 right now. Dow up by 20. We jump over to that dollar index. We keep our eye. We're pulling back a bit. Market probably likes that. And you have... The 10-year chopping around, we're still probably sitting at a yield of about 4.23. Let's check out our yield on the 10-year right now. Yeah, 4.22, the yield on the 10-year. All right, so we'll tease this story as we come in. Interesting one from the journal, but this is what's coming. So expensive drugs from Pfizer and other companies targeted for the first U.S. price negotiations. There's a lot that goes into this, obviously, even the legality. Um, I'm obviously no lawyer, man. It's, it's very difficult, and I say that in quite a disclaimer, right? Uh, I'm not a doctor, but I'm not a lawyer, but but these companies are obviously fighting this, and they're fighting it over the constitutionality, okay, of Medicare to have negotiating powers, okay, challenging the constitutionality constitutionality of Medicare's new negotiating powers. The money they're talking about, man, okay, is saving $25 billion a year in the next eight years. That's per a year to negotiate. You might Medicaid. think that if you want oh, to be successful to at trading we'll right in the back. stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. 
Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets continuing to climb right now. You're looking at an S&P up by almost six, NASDAQ 100 up by 20, Dow up by 30. Russell even gets in the positive by one point right now. I got a chart of Pfizer up here. Pfizer catching a lift. So maybe they dodged a bullet with not getting too many of their drugs on there or something. Let's see. I'm just looking for the pop here because seems like that would be a negative if your drugs are included on the list where you can negotiate with the biggest buyer of drugs out there. But nonetheless, Pfizer gets a little bit of a lift. Now, getting back to the story, just looking at some of the numbers, and this is where I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, but, okay, how can our government, how can you say it's not constitutionally correct for our government to be able to pass a bill through Congress and get signed by the president, okay? I mean, that's difficult enough, right, getting something through Congress the House, the Senate, and the presidency these days. They spend almost $400 billion on drugs. $400 billion. That is Medicare. $400 billion. 378 in 2021, okay? Beneficiaries usually have to pay some out-of-pocket, such as a copay or coinsurance. Now, immediately, they're going to take this, and it's going to cap how much members have to pay out of pocket for drugs starting in 2025. These lower prices they're negotiating start in 2026. That cap is gonna be $2,000, an annual cap on how much members have to pay out of pocket for drugs starting in 2025. Could save seniors who take expensive drugs hundreds of dollars a year in out of pocket payments, speaks for itself. Now, getting into some of the numbers and the actual details in terms of how this plays out, okay? So the naming of the 10 drugs subject to the price negotiations kicks off a lengthy process. Drug makers have until October 1st to say whether they will join in the negotiations. Okay, If they don't negotiate <coughs> excuse me, or accept the price resulting from it, companies face a tax of up to 95% on a medicine's U.S. sales, or they can pull all their drugs from Medicare and Medicaid coverage. Now, the remarkable part about these companies arguing that it's not constitutional is that there's no way they would ever be making $378 billion a year if you were asking all of the people themselves to pay for that money. So they want the best of it, right? They say, okay, we're never going to be able to take in that type of revenue from the customers themselves because people don't have that kind of money. That's the reason why we have Medicare, right? Because the elderly, uh, they don't have that kind of money when they reach that age where they need care, okay? So what they've done is they said, yes, that's a great government program. Use government money to pay us almost $400 billion a year. And then it's unconstitutional if you want to negotiate. I know I'm on the soapbox a bit. Uh, now, these are 
it's the drugs that the program spends the most on. Okay, so under the law, the Inflation Reduction Act that was passed, Medicare is now able to negotiate the prices of certain number of drugs each year, and it's the ones the program spends the most on, and that don't face competition from less expensive copies. Now, of course, what the drug makers are saying is this is going to hurt research and development. Okay, and that's where I don't know where the law breaks down on how that becomes unconstitutional, etc. It seems like they have the ability not to accept that money if they don't want to, right? But who's going to make that decision? Because you're talking about these are the biggest drugs out there, and the government is spending almost $380 billion a year to these companies. Uh, some of the drugs that are on there, cancer drug Imbruvica from AbbVie and Johnson & Johnson. You have Johnson & Johnson psoriasis treatment, Stellara, blood thinner from Xeralto, Novartis's heart drug, and Tresto. Excuse me. These are quite some names. You got uh, an arthritis drug from Amgen, a diabetes drug by AstraZeneca. Under the law, more drugs will be subject to negotiation each year. For the first several years, negotiations would be for the drugs that Medicare pays for through its Part D. Medicare can begin price talks for hospital-administered drugs covered through Part B beginning in five years. Five years. Okay? So this is not putting the clamps on tomorrow. Uh, the first negotiations for Part D are starting as of 2026 prices. It's not even 2024. I, I think that we'll be okay, folks, if we allow a little bit of negotiation when we're spending that type of money because we're the ones paying for it, okay? We are the ones paying for that when the government pays $380 billion a year. And that money would not be spent if the government wasn't paying for it. Okay, if we just had people buying those drugs, they wouldn't be buying it because they don't have that type of cash. That's the reason why it was set up. But nonetheless, it begins, and you're going to be hearing a lot about it. Um, the suits are going to be taking place in terms of the constitutionality of that going forward. And, of course, they argue that uh, they already discount many of the listed drugs, and we know how that goes. I mean, what a joke, right? The main price versus the discount price, any medical price you're talking about. And negotiations will curb research into certain drugs while not stopping health plans from limiting assets. This is what the trade groups are saying. I, I'm, I'm giving you a lot of this data because it's interesting stuff, and you're going to hear a lot about it. And you should hear a lot about it, okay? Because it's $380 billion a year, and it's going to be saving our government $25 billion a year in the next eight years. Giving a single government agency the power to arbitrarily set the price of medicines with little accountability, oversight, or input from patients and their doctors will have significant negative consequences long after this administration is gone. Now, that's getting political. Good for them. That's 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 quite a, a um, tactic to go for, okay? But the thing that caught me here is, folks, if you think input from patients and their doctors, okay, I would care to wager that patients and doctors would be on the side of allowing affordability for the drugs that they're using. I'm not sure where patients and doctors are going to be on the side of all of these medical companies. I'm sure there's some, okay? But that quote just gave me a little pause there saying, ah, you know, you can make the very real case that research and development going forward, okay, that that's going to hurt those companies, but you can always make that case can always. Why don't we double the price of every drug they're charging? Because just think of the research and development those companies would be able to go through. If we allowed our government to pay twice what they were charging, my goodness, we would have every drug twice as fast. Do you see how quickly that argument can be made? Yeah. So there's always going to be a line. Where that line falls is interesting. Um, but I'm not too worried about those drug companies, folks. And they wouldn't be making that kind of money if the government program like Medicare didn't exist in the beginning. So now they're going to be talking about just the negotiating power. And the reason why, they're not going to go out of there. It's the biggest drugs in Medicare, okay? And they're going to be making profits on them still. And so they're not going to turn down that business. A lot of soapboxes today, right? A lot of soapboxes. That's an interesting one, though. Um, yeah. Yeah. This market you talk about, interesting, man. We're now above where we were overnight, 44.54 in the S&P. Let's check in on some of the FANG stocks. We got Amazon shares up by about half a percent. The big dog, Apple shares, catching a little bit of a bid, up by four tenths. We talked about Google, up by 1.2 percent. Maybe the market liking that they're going to be selling everybody's AI tools in their cloud. 1.2 percent to the upside. You jump to Microsoft. Wonder if that's taking a hit on the Google news, potentially. 
tying in for the AI craze. Microsoft in the negative. When we got positive markets right now, we jump over to NVIDIA. They'll be talking about NVIDIA shares on fast market with our man Kevin Hinks at 12 noon Eastern time. They're up by about 7 tenths percent. They'll be talking a little Oracle as well. Check out Oracle catching a little bit of a bid right there as they get an upgrade today. They'll talk Oracle at 12 as well. Oracle up 2% positive market. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the final segment. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets right now. Holding on to positive territory. We have the S&P up by 12. NASDAQ 100 catches a bit on the open. We're up by 71 points. You get the Dow up by 70 as well. And the Russell positive by three. And you heard that ad during the break, folks. Yeah, my dad, he's been writing that gold report for over two decades. I just looked it up. I think this past issue was issue 1,114. 1,114, man. What is that? 1,000. 114 divided by 52, 21.4 years. Pretty remarkable, man. Every single week he's writing writing that gold report. You talk about experience. Uh, check out the gold report subscriber webinar tomorrow night. As I mentioned, if you're already a subscriber, you're all set. You can gain access. This will be archived too. So if you can't go live, sign up. The archive will be available usually by the next day for all subscribers. You can watch it as many times as you'd like. You get the gold report for a month, of course, or six months or a year, depending on when you sign up. And I was checking out the gold report right now. Uh, he's got four active positions in there right now. And 
yeah, four active positions in there right now. Uh, with the ability of two or three or two or three of them right near the entry, even all of them right near that entry. So check it out. You gain instant access to the gold report. And uh, yeah, you can't beat that, my dad, in there tomorrow at four o'clock Eastern time. And as we wrap up, let's talk a little bit of hurricane, man. We'll do the cone as we got about 30 seconds here to wrap up the program. So if you're in Florida, you get a large cone. Looks like Tampa Bay may dodge the worst of it right now, but stay safe if you're anywhere near there, man. We got what? Uh, max winds right now, something like 100, I mean 80, yeah, 80 miles an hour right now, but we're going to build over the next day or two as we go through. And interesting, the last one, the rain, right? So look at when you're even, you're talking about anywhere in the Tampa Bay area, four to six inches of rain. We're going to get some rain, man. And if you're actually where it rolls in, uh, somewhere, what is that? Maybe near Gainesville? My mom was telling me, I. Uh, Jim Cantori, he's heading to Gainesville. You watch out in Gainesville. You watch out. If you're where Jim Cantori is for the Weather Channel, uh, watch out. But be safe out there, folks, okay? Don't do anything you don't have to. If you got to go out there, get some stuff now. Hunker down. Be safe. Uh, and I hope to see you tomorrow. See how it goes. But as of night, right now, we'll see you tomorrow. Stay tuned, folks. We've got Basil Chapman coming up next. we got our man Steve Rhodes live at 2 o'clock today. Check that out. Larry live at 1, live all day. Have a great one, folks.